some Sal stories I should share with you that I think are pretty interesting. You know, Sal's, Sal's in a uh, shitty marriage, though. <laughs> I mean, that, that's putting it nicely. You know, the two of them are pretty distant from one another, especially since Sal figured out <laughs> that she was texting our emotional friend. But I don't know. I mean, you know, it's weird. I like to think that all the stuff on the air is just a little exaggerated because I was with them this weekend. They uh, you they know, seemed loving? Well, I mean, you know... The, I, I, I heard while he was on stage, she didn't even go to the show. She was in the casino, like, at some party. She was at the show, but mm. afterwards, um, they... I, Sal went one way and she went the other way, supposedly. I wasn't mm. there. I, right. I, I was told she was gambling at a craps table or something, and Sal was in a club, so I think they were separate. <laughs> it was the other way around. Oh. That Sal was gambling and she was at the club. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I I was there, and I even told Sal to come back up, you know, so we could hang out. And he just he he texted me and goes, "Ask her what she wants to do." And I texted him back, "Dude, that's not my job." When marriages get bad, that's like, ask her. He doesn't even say her name, right? <laughs> the guy was reading Guy Ritchie now is divorced from Madonna, and he refers to her as it, like um, it. It, it's in a bad mood now. Oh no! Uh, it probably doesn't want to see me right now. He calls her it. Wow, that's a good Puts move. Puts the lotion in the bath. Exactly. So Madonna's publicist was pretty funny. She released a statement saying it has been in a very good mood since her divorce. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I can think of worse words. You know, her is actually quite nice if you think did about it. Did you get it. along with your Like, you guys didn't even hang out uh, in, at Foxwoods. No, we, we did a little bit, yeah. you know, but th there was an after party, and she wanted to go to that. And you know what? You're in a casino, so when in Rome. My her guys were hitting on her and stuff. and uh, Every guy hit on her. She looks very one. good. I, yeah. yeah. She they know very good. she's an easy target. Yeah. Right. She's vulnerable. <laughs> so oh. that, here's, here's a great story I heard about you, and tell me if it's true. <laughs> this morning? Yeah. Oof. Sal gets up, there's tons of snow. First thing he does is he calls John Hine. Uh, no, these, uh, I'm all sorry. These, all these guys treat John Hine like they're, they're his dad, you know? Mm -hmm. John Hine came in last night into the city and stayed here so he could be here on time. But uh -huh. So Sal was bummed out. I think he was trying to get a ride with that uh, John Hine. Right. But anyway. I went to start up my car first, and it wouldn't start because I had, mm -hmm. you know, had uh, 1,000 pounds of snow on top. So Sal comes back in, and his wife's asleep, and she goes, what's wrong? And he goes, oh, my God, there's tons of snow out there. I can't even get the car out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't get out. I said, I'm going to hop in the shower, and I'm going to try again to get the snow off and try to start it again. Right. Car wouldn't even, you know, it was a mess. It's four in the morning. Sal finishes his shower, goes out, looks out the window. His wife is in nowhere pajamas. to be found. She's in her pajamas, out there, shoveling like a mad woman <laughs> to get Sal's car out of the snow. You're now, kidding! You know, this was really weird, because she doesn't do anything for him. Right. You know, they, they hate each other. She needs so, him out of there. So Sal's like, "What? The, she? So what do you? What do you think's going on? She? She obviously yeah, wants Sal out. Yeah, <laughs> Sal, that is on the only thing day. that was missing what was like through your mind. It, like the psycho music was going through my head. <laughs> Sal, that is she crazy. was digging that fucking snow <laughs> like there was a buried treasure under it. <laughs> and you see her in her pajamas. The snow's up to her knees, and she and snow is flying everywhere. Do you like a beaver eating a piece of wood? <laughs> was, yeah, right. Like when you put through a wood chipper, yeah, right, snow. Right. I'm like, what the fuck? And is she, she got doing? you out. Right? Oh, she got the car started. Yeah. Wow. My car was... You'd think my car just came out of Boca Raton. There wasn't a... <laughs> you looked like you weren't There even wasn't a, a drop store. of fucking <laughs> snow. Wait, but fuck? not only that, <laughs> not only is my car done, yeah. just in case... My car couldn't get out of the driveway. She, she started the car. truck. <laughs> the truck was on. Yeah. So wow. then I go, wow. I go, you got it started. She goes, yeah, yeah, I got started. She goes, listen, just try to get out. If you can, I got my truck. So she, I, I get in the car, and I'm pulling out, and then she runs back out. She, she goes, are you okay? I go, yeah. She goes, well, if you want, the kids are sleeping. I'm going to wake up Antonio, give him the cell phone number, and I'll drive you to the train station. I'm like, I got it. I, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> Why do you think it is? She, what, what's going on today that she needs you out? Well, she doesn't. Ha she drives the bus for a preschool. Not and, today she doesn't. But, right. They emailed her last night saying that she She's doesn't have to work. Right? So she was home mm -hmm. today. Yeah. And I think that when she found out, I could possibly be home with her. You think that's the best case scenario. What do you think? Do you think she has something going on in the house? No, I don't know. You see, you're putting stuff in his head. You're, you, Sal is no, thinking. I, I'm Sal's stuff just in thinking. Head. See, Sal, you're thinking she's annoyed with your company, so she wants you out. Right. Howard the, is going to a I'm, much darker I, place. I, I wonder if anyone else has the day off today. Oh yeah. <laughs> you scumbag piece of shit. Who well, me? No, yeah, I, I mean, didn't the, do it. That's true, but no, I don't. I don't think that's. He's the case. thinking she has plans to have yeah, company. Of course. Of course. But my wife. She, 
I swear, she wouldn't even get me catch up. It's if it's right. if it's in hands distance, and she's out there at four in the morning shoveling the uh, snow. Yeah, proving out how it's it was like a scene you. out of Survivor. Like it seemed like there was going to be a big reward at the end of it, and yeah, she got me out of there. What is the, there is a reward. Yeah. She's got something going on. <laughs> she got a date. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, Come playing. On. What's going but on? Maybe she was being nice to me. Here's going. That's yeah. Well, whatever. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. the best case scenario. But I don't think that's true. Uh, to argue. Because I'm trying not to think like Howard here, but of course, as a man, I do sometimes think he's right. But the kids are home all day, right? Are the kids home all day? The, today they are because there's no school. Right. right. So what? Yeah, but I mean, you gonna, call well, my her... kids are on their they're downstairs in their basement on their computers. They play their laptops. Yeah, but if she's having someone over, Howard, she ain't having someone over the kids. No. Though, right, right, right. No, no, not no. that I know. But this, I mean, when you followed her, the you one found thing you that caught killed her in me. the car would have do it, right? So the I never kids t- weren't in the car. I never but, I mean, told she wasn't you doing this? it. No, what? This one thing kills me, man. I mean, I could take a good joke, and I'm rolling with the punches. I have to, otherwise I'd kill myself. Right. But one day, he did. there was a problem with the swing set, and my wife asked me to fix it. Right. And I didn't get around to it. And while, while the kids were home, she invited him over to fix oh my, my no. swing set. That was the one thing that drove oh me absolutely. My God. Well, salad should drive you crazy. Dude. That, she invited over the emotional friend? <laughs> yeah. To fix the kid's swing set while they were Dude. home? My gracious. Well, again, they were. Out of all the people to call, Dude. she calls him. In her defense, they worked together, so they kind of knew of him. Jenny. But he came over and fixed my children's swing set. It's over, And Jenny. you don't think there was flirting going on? And, and I come up. I mean, what? Why Back then, this was, this was prior to me busting her. Right, right. You and know, he's so, doing a, you, oh, well. <laughs> but still, I mean, to, to know that, you know, you, you know, that's what my dad did to, to me. You know, the beautician next door to the pizza place used to cut my hair. Right. And my dad made me kiss her goodbye, and he was fucking this broad. Mm-hmm. Right. Until one day my mom came coming in, and she tackled the lady in the, in the beauty parlor. <laughs> Do you think your kids prefer him over the house? Like when she was shoveling like a mad woman to get you out. Do you think like he might be coming over today? No, I don't. Maybe think they pr- so. they prefer when he you know fun dad. <laughs> no. When is uh, when is snow day <laughs> dad, dad coming? He'll take him sledding. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what are you gonna do? That is hilarious. But I, again, to see her work that hard, I I definitely once I started driving to the train station, I I said to myself, wow, she's working awfully hard to get me the fuck out of here. Today. Call her up oh, now yeah. and. Tell her because of the snow, you're coming right home. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, she'll have a ton of things to do. Yeah. Eh, what are you going to do? Oh, man. She cleans the house, so. So would you say this weekend was a good weekend? You had fun with her? I played a lot by myself, so that was a lot of fun. And then, Because uh, of the snow, does the emotional friend have the day off today? Um, I don't know. I don't know his schedule. I don't know. I know they no longer well, work. Well, she to- has the day off. They she don't has- work together. Wait a second. Hold a second. She has the day off because of the snow? Right. You know, the emotional friend works with her, right? No. No longer. So oh, as no far longer. as I know. He what do you mean as far as you know? Well, I, I, I heard he's no longer there. Really? Yeah. And Who far- told you that? She did? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. I'll take a word for it. I'm, you know. I bet you he's got the day off. <laughs> so, That's why Sal had to get out of there. Why are you staying married to her? I love her. You know, we get along. He can't afford to leave. You can't afford to leave. No, no. I don't want, I don't want to keep bringing that up. I love my wife. You can't we afford get to along, leave. You know, you know. It's She's a true. great mother. We, you know, we, we we had some action, Jackson, that night at the casino. I'll, I'll admit that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Oh, and so it, was, it was a good week. She was drunk off her ass. I don't think she knew who was touching her. But <laughs> she, she filed rape charges against you? No, 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 no. That, that, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Only you piled on, right? There were no other people there. No, not right. that I can remember. Yeah. So that was it. What it doesn't now, sound Artie? like there's any trust there. Artie, what are you eating now? Mm. Target burger. Man, that's. He nasty. has been eating since the show started. This is uh, this is the one you turned. It's healthy, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, but this is nothing unusual, is it? No. I mean, but this is Artie. I don't notice him eating this much every day. Hey, oh, yeah. You, you ought to see. You, you ought to see. It's uh, an orgy. <laughs> Howard, can I talk? You know, Artie had a, some trouble with his helicopter this weekend as well. Oh yeah, tell that story, Artie. What oh, happened? Dude, a you helicopter. Have, you have no idea. This is the craziest fucking. Artie thing. has a helicopter. Oh, I don't have one, but uh, there's there's this guy, uh, a former cop who I met uh, through some uh, through some people who. Has a helicopter, he has access to these things. By the way, I love how George stares at you when you tell a story and you totally ignore him. Well, I'm talking. I, 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 you I know, know, no, no, I'm just saying I like it. I just like the, I just like the dynamic of it. It's weird. Am when I, I tell Nancy a story, Reagan? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you stare at him, loving. It's weird when I tell a story on the air. It's like I, I, I do tend to talk to you. So right. I got to no, look no, away should. from I'm, him. I'm, I'm yeah. just saying it's an interesting <laughs> dynamic. Go ahead. Thank you. Me George, George is not insane. Me and George choreographed this whole fucking. That's thing. right. Yeah, okay, so what happened? So. I, I, I've, I've been taking helicopters to some gigs. Like, you know, if it's out on eastern Long Island and stuff, you save time. So we're going up to Foxwoods, and they have a helipad I have not even two-minute drive away from the big casino there. Wow. So uh, we decided to take the helicopter. Now, it's me, J.D., the kid who took over for Ted, Timmy. 
and this guy, Mike, helicopter Mike, we call him. Right. And he's, uh, you know, uh, he knows security. He's an ex-cop. He used to drive. Uh, he learned how to fly a helicopter in the military. He's really, you know, he's he knows what he's doing. Right. And he's very cautious. We've done it a, a bunch of times, and I've always felt very safe. So I sit in the front, and I was just like in in a zone. I, I, I put my hood on, and I wasn't listening to any of the radio stuff going back and forth. So it's like a 50-minute flight up there, and out of the nowhere, out of the Connecticut woods comes <laughs> Foxwoods and the MGM Grand. They rise up like out of the out of the woods. It's weird. Like you see these two big fucking buildings. Right. And we're like, oh, okay, I'm good. We're finally gonna land because it's cramped. So uh, it's very it's pitch black out now because we left late, about six o'clock, and it's completely dark. <laughs> he circles the buildings a couple of times, and we don't land. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know, right. is this guy fucking with me? Because I just want to land. And he seems like in a little bit more of a panic than I've ever seen him. And I go, Mike, what's going on? He goes, there's no, the helipad has no lights on and there's no one down there. Uh, so I don't know where we're going to land. Mm-hmm. I go, what are you talking about? He said, there's, the helipad has to be lit because right, I can't, can't land, see. I can't land on a helipad. So um, there's no radio communication. Everybody just left the oh helipad. Oh my God. What's with those Indians uh, well, who run the place? Well, what happened was uh, the story we got afterwards was it's probably we were, a big tribal council. <laughs> we were su- we were supposed to be there at a certain time. Yeah. And we were uh, like they waited for half an hour and then they just closed up shop. They shut the lights ah, and wow. left. <laughs> These people just left and shut the lights oh, to the helipad. And he goes, "Dude, I-, I said, can you land in the dark?" He's like, "Well." There could be wires around. No, I can't do yeah, that. Yeah, you could die. So now they're not answering us, and it's an eight o'clock Man. show. It's six thirty, and we're circling the fucking <laughs> Foxwoods Hotel. So and doesn't security realize that there's a helicopter hovering? Can't now, they hear you? Now, well, now uh, Tim gets out his thing and texts to the woman who he's in <laughs> uh, contact with, who's supposed to meet us there and take us to the rooms. Look, tell somebody to get out the helipad and turn the lights on, but she's not answering. Oh, yeah, so yeah. this guy makes, like, an executive decision, I guess, and he just starts looking around for houses that have big backyards. Wow. <laughs> and uh, he finds, he, he eyeballs a house, and it, it, this guy really knows what he's doing because he noticed that they were burning their garbage in this house. Right. And when I tell you this is Connecticut, two and a half hours outside of New York City, it might as well have been the rural, rural Kentucky woods. Wow. It was like... They, they were burning garbage. They had, like, a pot belly stove. He could tell they probably didn't have electricity that went out to the house, so there were no wires around. Wow. wow. So he, he could probably land there. So they have this big outdoor field, and we essentially landed in these people's backyards. <laughs> These people are having dinner. Did they come running out of the house? Yeah, they're having they're having dinner. Okay. Oh my god, that's and it's, funny. It's it's a guy it's a guy, his friend, the guy's son, and the other friend. And um they're just enjoying dinner and all of a sudden the helicopter just <laughs> <laughs> like we just land in their backyard. Were you, you scared? See, you know what? I was never scared. I was more just like, what the fuck is going on? Right. Because the guy is such a good pilot, we were never out of control. Wow. He just was looking for a place to land. So it's like your clit too. Right, so well, so we, we, I go, I go. What are you doing, Mike? What, what are we doing? He goes, I have to land in this backyard. I got to figure out what's going on. So deer all scatter. You can see the deer moving away, and we land in this open field. Wow. And uh, which is essentially the backyard of these people's house. Now they start come running out, and they look like. Get our guns. Well, We're being invaded by aliens. That's what they look like. They look like right. these three guys come out who were rednecky kind of guys, but they were the nicest fucking guys in the world. Right. They were like, what's the matter? You got problems. The, the other guy was uh, in, in, like, Vietnam or something. Right. So he's looking for action. He's like, <laughs> I mean, he was like he was having a flashback. And, what do you, got? you got engine trouble, pal, or what's going on? And he goes, no, they wouldn't put the helipad lights on at the Foxwoods. And, um, <laughs> and, and now the Foxwoods are within eye distance of their house. They go, Foxwoods? We go, yeah. They said, what's that? I go, the enormous casino that's two feet from here. <laughs> it's like goes, Amish. He goes, oh, we just They're hate pretending it. pretending it's not there. He goes, oh. we, we just hate those motherfuckers. So now, here's the funny part. Right. right. We land in this field that's surrounded by trees. <laughs> we get out, and we go into their house. And I say to the guy, uh, I say to the one guy, uh, J.D. has this part on tape, but the guy wouldn't sign a release. We got his phone number. The, the one guy, Kyle, he was very suspicious of everything. He was a military guy. Right. And uh, I said, what's your name? He goes, Kyle. I go, what's your last name? He goes, Kyle. <laughs> and I, I said, oh, he, goes, wh- he goes, what are you doing here? Yeah. I go, I'm a comedian. I'm performing at the Foxwoods tonight. He goes, well, you're a comedian? He, I, I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm on the Howard Stern show. Have you ever heard of Howard Stern? He goes, I heard of Howard Stern. 
He goes, but uh, but who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I'm a comedian. I work with him on the radio, and I'm telling jokes. And he goes, have a beer. And I go, well, I'm on the wagon. He goes, have a beer. He just, <laughs> he just opens a beer and you hands it to drink. me. drink. <laughs> Meanwhile, okay, helicop <laughs> helicopter Mike gets on the phone, and he finally gets them to put the helipad lights on. They go, we're sorry. We, did, we just didn't. I said, half an hour we're late, and you just abandoned the fucking thing? So he gets them to, to put the lights back on. So now I learned a little bit about helicopters. We run back out to the field, run to the guy's backyard, and we all get back in the helicopter, but to get out, uh, to, to, to get out Meanwhile, of the... Meanwhile, this negates all the time you were supposed right. to be saving. Exactly. Right. And I had I wanted to get to my room and relax for an hour before the show. None of that's happening now. Right. That's over. Uh, yeah. So I'm about to get there. It just, was Cal. Get there, throw a shirt on, and just, just go on stage. So we get back in the helicopter, me, Tim... JD and helicopter Mike. Now, to get out of the woods, you have to do what they call 110% power thrust. Okay. You have to go straight up. Right. right? Yeah, you're stuck there. Yeah. yeah you, you can't go out on an angle. So he goes, he goes, dude, you know, uh, there's way too much weight on this helicopter <laughs> for me to do this. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes, he goes you know what? You, you have to get off the helicopter, otherwise I can't get... get. <laughs> you or them all? Well, he, sa he said to me, he, go, he was laughing, he goes, well, listen, he goes... Well, why not get rid of all those other guys? Well, he goes, throw off the other two guys. Let him stay with happen? Kyle's house. He goes, we're about three... He goes, we're about 300 pounds off the... <laughs> <laughs> so oh, Tim, Tim is five foot one. Right. JD is what, about a buck fifty. So I'm doing the math, and I'm going, you know, them together don't add no, up. No, but if you, add up, if you add up all their weights, it would be 300, But no? not the two guys, man. No. Like, <laughs> like I clearly had to go. Wow. So so he goes. So he tries it once. He goes, nope, this ain't gonna happen. Wow. And and he, you he, held down a helicopter. Right. I, <laughs> helicopter. That's gotta be incentive uh, to go that's on. That's what you know. Die. You gotta drop a couple. So he tries it once. He tries it twice. He goes, dude, this ain't gonna happen. We start to spin a little bit. I go, well, fuck Whoa. it. Just, just put it down. Just put it down. Right. right. And. To this guy's credit, helicopter Mike, I love, he is so safe with everything. He's like, we can't do this. I said, well, what the fuck are we going to do? He goes, these guys will have to drive you to the gigs. Right? Oh, my God. So now me, <laughs> we, leave, we leave the helicopter in the backyard. Yeah. And, Mike, and we just put it there. The military guy, Kyle, is like, I'll take care of it. I don't want to fly one. You want me to fly it over the helipad? And he's like, no, just leave it in your backyard. Do us a favor. Yeah. So the other guy has a van. That like barely starts. Kyle's Man. friend. <laughs> Kyle's friend has a van. Yeah. And um, now he, these guys are driving you to Foxwood. This guy's driving me to Foxwood. Oh my god. I go. Do you know how to get to Foxwood? He goes. We'll, we'll yeah. find it. It's right over there. You can see the lights. You know. Right, I go. Right. I know a road that'll take us over there. So now we figure all of us will go. And then Mike will get me situated. He'll go back at the helicopter and right. then land it where it has to be. So me, JD, Tim, helicopter Mike, get in this guy's van. He left the helicopter there? He left the helicopter there. Yeah. And then the guy, Kyle, is going, you sure you don't want me to fly the thing? He's like, no, K Kyle, just don't touch the helicopter. Right. So this guy drives us to the show. <laughs> wow. And, and he goes, Did you um, give him some sort of reward? Well, here's what happened. He drives us to the show. I go, do you want to? Do you have any interest in coming to my show? And he's like, I don't know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't seem that funny. Are you funny? Tell me one of your jokes. And, uh, and I said, well, do you like going over there? Can I get you a free room? He goes, nah, we just stay at our place mostly. Hmm. And uh, they say that at 11 o'clock, the guy said, if you want to come back after the show at 11 o'clock, they're getting like four blonde hookers. <laughs> like they just live their own lives, these guys. Right. Um, and so the, the guy driving us, and the guy driving us was a real, they were all great. They fucking saved our life. Right. And uh, the guy driving says, I, my family's from the Bronx. I know Howard. He goes, I watch the show. I've seen you on there. I go, thanks, man. So he pulls us up to the to the fucking MGM Grand, and you know there's all security waiting for our limo to pull right. up. We pull up in a fucking van that barely <laughs> operates with this guy, and I gave the guy five hundred bucks. Wow. Which I mean, the, the guy couldn't. I said, you know what? I bet Foxwoods would probably be responsible for this, but I, the guy helped us out immediately, and I said, I'm not going to make you wait. Foxwoods will take forever. Right. I had money on me because I was going to gamble. Right. And uh, I had a few grand on me, so I gave the guy five hundred bucks, and he was like, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so now, just paid their mortgage for a year. Now we mortgage this house. Howard was, was <laughs> Howard. <laughs> it's you know you say I don't Fred grew up in a though. rural area. Yeah. Now I believe it. Oh, this yeah. is Connecticut. It, there was like they were living in a log cabin with no electricity. Why doesn't, there. why doesn't the helicopter guy get back in the helicopter and fly? Like in other words, why did he have to drive? He left the helicopter at the Kyle's because house because he also worked security and, and oh, like he, oh. he, he, he you know okay. he tours with Artemis Pyle, the Skinner guy. Yeah, and he's his objective is to make sure I'm safe too. He's a real professional. So he goes, I'm going to go with you. Oh, okay. And he got. So we drove us there. We gave the guy 500 bucks. I go, share this with Kyle. Right. You know? And he goes, I will. So 
uh, I got ready. I did the gig. I did the gig. Everything went fine. The guy was real. How were the blonde hookers? Well, we didn't go back for that, but I think oh. we should have. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he went back, got the helicopter. They took care of it, didn't touch it. He flies, gets to the helipad, lands it again, and we got the whole story. Wow. All right. Good. Well, glad you're safe and sound. Right now. Nothing. I think she did a nice thing. I, you know what I think? I think it's exactly what Artie said. I don't think she wanted to be cooped up in the house with me all day. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all I think. You know, I don't think anything else. Now, Howard's saying he thinks it's something else. Is that, is that getting to you at all? You, or you think it's just... No matter what I do, no matter what angle we take, I think Howard would say it's, you know, this guy is, you know, he's involved. I mean, it, it must be, it has to do something with the emotional friend. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case. Definitely, definitely not. So... So things are going good? Great. Fantastic. Never better. <laughs> She was helping out. She was, she was, you know, shoveling snow at four in the morning to make sure I get to work on time. How many times has she done that in the past? Never. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, hey, every wife, every guy should have a, you know what? You know, sometimes you don't get along with your wife. Sometimes she doesn't get along with you. You know, you have your differences. But if something good could come out of it, like somebody shoveling your car out of the driveway at four o'clock in the morning, Maybe sometimes it pays to, you know, to have some problems in your marriage. You know what I mean? Yeah. If she didn't hate me so much, I'd be stuck at home right now with her. So there is, you know, there is, there is some. Uh, good morning, everybody. What's happening? Uh, and how are you? Well, as you can see, Artie is not here. Hmm. Hey, Gary, can you tell me about the phone call you got from Art? There is a situation that has developed. Really? What, uh, what's going on with Artie? Wait a second. Where's your microphone? How dare you? Go ahead. I guess it was about 10 after 5 this morning. I'm driving in, and the phone rings. Usually it's Sal to tell me he missed his train at Jamaica, but it was Artie, hmm. which I was sort of surprised at. And I said, hey, what's up? And he goes, listen, dude. He goes, I got up. It was dark in the, in the house, and I, I walked into a bookcase or something. And he goes, my, I hit my eye. He goes, there's blood all over the place. Oh. He goes, I called a cab. I'm on my way to the emergency room, and I'm like, I'm like, he goes, I guess I'll be in later. I'm like, well, Artie, just go and get it taken care of. Just, you know, call me as soon as everything's done to tell me how you're doing. And he goes, yeah, I don't know what happened, and uh, hopefully the emergency room isn't that full, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. That's a pretty good Artie impression. Jeez. You did a really good Artie impression there. Thanks. I talk to him a lot like that. Dude. I have more conversations. Did he say dude? <laughs> hey, I walked into it. He said a bookcase or a cabinet. Wow. I think he said a cat. I think he what, said he is his, to... his uh, apartment booby trapped. Well, I was saying to Howard, he, you know, Artie doesn't sleep like a regular person. So like he falls down and sleeps for like 17 hours. And when you wake up like that, you know, it's dark. You know, sometimes I don't know. I, I, yeah, Artie I, keeps going until he sleeps for like two days straight. It's dark. Of course it's dark. It's dark every morning when you get up. I know. I don't know. I have no explanation. <laughs> Do you do an impression of Artie at the emergency room and what that's going to go like? Uh, hey, listen, I, uh, I hit a bookcase and uh, I just blood all over the place. He gets stitched me up. I got to get to work. There you go. He's good. Mm. Fla, fla, flo, la. He, he has an impression. His eye? Or his head, his head or his eye. Good Lord. Again, I was like. Who knows? I was so unprepared for the call. Gary doing the Artie impression uh. almost perfectly. Well, why didn't he just sit in the chair? Because <laughs> I, I have no material. <laughs> um, do you really think he's at an emergency room? Yes. See, I always believe Artie. Where do you think he would be? Like, where, like if he's Back not to sleep? Oh, you think he just wanted to sleep? But he's, <laughs> but then he'd have to come in at some point with stitches. He clearly told me he's getting yeah. stitches. He'd have to put band aids on. <laughs> uh, Matt, I would you're like on to the, air. the hospital. Jersey City, hey, New Jersey. Hey, hey, now. Um, just call to let you know there ain't no way in hell Artie's making it in today. Oh, what's the over under here? I mean, is uh, what what are the chances of Artie actually making it? He'd have, okay, so he's probably at the hospital now. They'd have mm. to stitch him up. If With he gets, gets in, I mean, you know, who knows what's in the emergency the problem, room. Right. But when Artie yeah. walks into the emergency room, aren't they going to know it's Artie? Don't they just stop with all the real emergency yeah, You know what's they... funny? It's funny. When you go to an emergency room, they have a way of not knowing who anybody. They, they don't even look up. <laughs> uh, Bianca, you're on the air in Great Lakes, Ohio. Hey, Howard. Hey. Hey, hi, good. Good. Then, um, Howard 100 News over there at ER right now. Howard 100 News? Yeah, go send him over at ER, see what's going on. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Bianca. Oh, sweetheart. All right. I hope y'all are okay. I'm okay. okay. We're okay. It's Artie. We have to worry about it. Oh, hi, Robin. Hi. Oh, we, you know what? Every time Artie doesn't come in, you always think something else. Can, can you imagine the look of joy on Artie's face while he's getting stitched up and Langford walks in and sticks a <laughs> mic in his face? <laughs> Death, you're on the air. Go ahead. Death. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, uh, 
I was calling for Artie. Oh, Dad. Is Def calling for oh. Artie? I, I, it's, I was going to tell him I'm coming to get him in August. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold on. So August is when you're coming. All right. Thank you, Def. Hey, Howard. Yes. Uh, can you rename the show The Slow Death of uh, Artie Lang? No. It's always The Howard Stern Show. All right, Howard. You're the best, man. We love you. Hey, Def, who gave you this number? Kenneth Keith Callenbach? Yes. Oh. Uh, All right. Thank you. I saw, I saw him looking for little girls up here. Stop it. Ridiculous. Have a good day, pal. What's going on? I think on? Death is trying to say that Artie's rushing the schedule and he's not due till August. Oh, okay. <laughs> Death was afraid he had made an early visit. <laughs> hey, did I hear on yesterday's wrap-up show you claim you've had 80 blowjobs from different women? No. Wait a second. I heard Benji said he's had sex with 100 women, which is so total horseshit. No, no. Benji said he had sex with hundreds of women. Yeah. And you said that although you've only had sex with two women, your wife and one other woman because you got married young, that you claim you had up to... 80 different women blow you. No, what happened was Benji said if you cut out the blowjobs and everything else, he's been with about 80 women. Right, Benj? That's yeah. what you said. Right. And somebody asked me about my number, and I said it would approach. It would approach that. You would, you're so full of it. I'm not full you're of it. You're telling me you had blowjobs from almost 80 women before you got married. Uh, no, less than 80 women. I said approaching. Uh, 70 women? Uh, Somewhere in that ballpark. A, d a decent amount. How old were you when you met your wife? I was 20, uh, no, I was younger than that. You were like, what, 18? Yes. And you're saying by the time, between the ages of, what, 16 and 18, you younger. had eight, almost 80 blowjobs. Younger than that. From different women. You believe this? I mean, I'd have to he, sit back. He was the blowjob king. I just don't buy that for a second. I'd have to sit back and literally count, but I said the number would approach Benji's number. I didn't say 80. Well, how many would you say? 60? <laughs> Roughly, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, Artie just showed up, but well, go ahead. Yeah. I gotta tell you something. Uh, let me see your eye. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, oh. it was that bad, you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. major. It's right near your eye. I know. I what got the lucky. hell oh, did man. you do? I got lucky. First of all, you know the you know the uh, you know the video of Jeff the drunk, his momentum taking him by the. <laughs> there was a bet uh, going around, and I don't know if it's an exotic bet. If Artie would have sex in Vegas this weekend. Oh, well, well, if you took yes there, you'd be a winner. Whoa. Whoa. No wonder you, you know, I, first hey, of all, I like had a great, you, Howard, you, I had, I had a great weekend. But wait, I got to ask you about that. Here's what happened. I had a bunch of buddies from Jersey there, too. It was an interesting mix. You know, Pharrell was out there, and, and uh, uh, Pharrell. I landed. <laughs> Pharrell's the secret. He's a great guy. I, I love hanging you, out with him. Did Pharrell advise you on your bets? Um, a little bit. I know Pharrell loved the Colts. He I, loved the Colts, I, I so he was he did, right. Yeah, yeah. Did he tell you to take the under instead of the over? I don't remember the exact discussion I had with him about that. I just know that all Pharrell kept yelling was, Colts, Colts, Colts. Shake it out, Colts. Shake it out, shake no, it out, shake it out. <laughs> nobody had any confidence in this Rex Grossman guy. And Peyton Manning, it just looked like it was his time to get a ring, you know. Okay. Um... So, so, okay. I land, <coughs> so I land a, about midnight on uh, Thursday, Thursday night. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you I, sleep on the plane, I hope? R hardly. Hardly, all right. But, uh, it was too excited. It's like Disney World. Right? Did you drink on the plane? Uh, no. I had a nice little dinner, though, uh, there in first class, a little shrimp cocktail. Look at you. <laughs> and, Any celebrities <laughs> on your flight? He was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. No. I don't know. No celebrities on the Vegas Did you flight. wear your sunglasses, your new Hollywood sunglasses? Did I love these things. All right. Uh, these are $8. Good. I love them. Good for you. Um, so, uh, He's Elvis. Now. I yeah. land. I check into my suite. It was. I was disappointed in the suite. It didn't have a waiting pool, like I was told. Oh, no waiting pool, but you did have the four bedrooms. And... I had I had two bedrooms in there. It was a, it was That's a, a pussy magnet isn't in a room like that uh, hey look man for some reason girls like to be in a nicer room oh yeah they like that I and found they feel that. like they're with a winner <laughs> yeah right. i have to put up a lot of winner illusions <laughs> right. it ain't easy uh so um it's a lot of work getting late Go i landed ahead. at midnight and i went i did uh, I, I went and met my buddies over at the mandal the luxor and the mandalay bear connected it's like i a, feel you feel good about living this morning look I at you i feel that he has revived yeah. himself i think you're gonna lose weight next i had a very i had a very fun like very cool american like it's good weekend. to be a live weekend if muhammad if muhammad hot if muhammad atta had, had a weekend <laughs> like i had this weekend and three three thousand wonderful Americans would still be alive right yeah. now. That's all I'll say. Do you think your secret is the fact that you wear eight dollars sunglasses and a twenty thousand dollar watch? <laughs> what do you think it is with you? The, the mixing and matching. I forgot of my watch. I, got, I didn't even take it out. If there. that girl had seen that watch, oh. that would have been the end of it. So uh, it sounds. It seems not. I think that Dan the Song Party Man has met this chick. I thought he I said he wasn't going out. I thought he said he wasn't going out there. Dan Dan showed up, and oh, I'll tell you what. Thank God, Dan. 
I'm going to let Dan say what he said to this one chick. There, 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 there was a lot of pussy running around in between our first and second show on Friday night. Right. And, Sold out shows. Uh, yeah, and you're well, hanging out backstage in your dressing room, right? Yeah, yeah. We had a really nice, great dressing room area with a, you know, a separate room for me, a separate room. And uh, Levy, Nick DiPaolo, my buddy Joe Matarisi, you guys saw Carnegie Hall. You know, uh -huh. the, the guy who says, he knows Beth kind of Joe. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's friends with Eddie Ift and that guy. But uh, he, I was out there with a lot of friends who were comedians of my, f f that I love hanging out with. By the way, Bro. I've never seen you so happy. I had a very good He's weekend. smiling ear wow. to ear. <laughs> this is better than heroin, I think, this weekend. And again, like I say, I think this chick that that I, that I think she's hot as hell. But Dan, song parody, Dan, matter, I'll give he'll, he'll give give his, right. uh, his opinion. Every time. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, Dan starts doing like. Uh, the chick, said, and how, what do you mean the chick was hanging around with you? She, there was like chicks all over the place. So we were like, she was like, what are you guys doing? She like, we said, just come, any hot chick, we said, just come backstage. Were you immediately attracted to her? She was very attractive. She was right. cute. She was young. She was looked, she wearing a little miniskirt? She did have a miniskirt. How on. young? You know what she was wearing? 14. Well, she looked young. She was 23 years old. Nothing but wrong. She, she did look young. You're a young man. You're 38 years old. And, uh... So, um, yeah, I was just like, fuck it. We got a big backstage. Just any hot broad, you see, just say, come backstage. Uh -huh. So There you go. <laughs> in, between, uh, in between the first and the second shows, uh, Dan pulled his girls. <laughs> he was doing, I guess he was doing, like, trim coordination. Good for oh, him. he was arranging? <laughs> he said such obnoxious shit, but it's necessary. And I what would he say? And I didn't, like, authorize him to say any of this stuff. <laughs> well, in between the first and the second show, I did this move now where I said, fuck it. After uh, my last joke, I go up and, and I start, you know, signing autographs in the front row, but I'm just looking for broads now. Right. Oh, good for you. I'm doing the David Lee Roth thing. Yeah, so, I would do that too. I, I, then the first show, this chick, Michelle from Florida, I saw her in the front row. I've never seen a hotter chick in my... Now, I know I say this a lot. <laughs> she was an 11 on a scale from 1 to 10. The I chick mean, who was in the front row of your show. Yeah, well, she came up to the front row at the end. Right. And I look like the kind of chick where your, your head gets locked on her. Like, okay. whoa. So uh, she's like, can I get a picture? And I said, well, um, I can't bend down. Why don't you come backstage? We'll get a picture. Oh! <laughs> So she's like, all right. So I grab her, and it's such nice. an awkward... But I just said, fuck it. I said, it's such an awkward move. I'm just going to grab her. Were you like Bruce Springsteen and like lifted her onto the stage? It was that sort of thing. Imagine Bruce Springsteen With Courtney complete, Cox. completely out of shape. Right. So, so this is right from the audience. Everybody can see you. Right from the audience. Look so, at you. Uh, like, like an animal. And again, this... this <laughs> like King Kong. Literally King like Kong. an animal. <laughs> Tell you, Howard, I said, I said, fuck it. I, I was on such tunnel vision to get laid this weekend. I was like, I don't care what anybody thinks right now. I'm going to grab you out of here. For you. <laughs> but guess who's right behind? There is the fiance. Oh, <laughs> my. And again, he looked like a nice guy, so I'm like, all right, man, you come gotta on. Grab him and too. the guy gave me a look like he was cool. He was like, he goes, Artie, man, I'm with her, so you don't even have to take me. I'm like, she was on stage already, so I'm like, well, come backstage, we'll get a picture wow. or something. So then, so then they start Sorry. walking backstage. He ended up being a real nice guy. <laughs> Not that nice. He didn't let you sleep with her, did he? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think I would have had a shot at this broad anyway. But but I just said, fuck you, get back there. But I bet they, the the uh, boyfriend was in good shape and thin. I, I'll tell you what, he was in better shape than me, but he was he wasn't he like wasn't great. He wasn't Brad Pitt, you know. Uh, okay. uh, so. Then uh, then we go backstage. There's, there's other chicks who came with other people. Then a smoking hot Asian chick comes back who's married to a guy one of my friends was with. She gets tunnel vision for this this hot blonde backstage. The oh. Asian chick? Yeah, and I guess... Did I, you tell her no ticky, no washing? Well, they, <laughs> I, I guess that this uh, they have that relationship where maybe she brings chicks home for this guy. Right. So she zeroes in on the smoking hot blonde chick, and they're, like, hugging, taking pictures with each other. Wow. And, like... I'm telling you, there wasn't a guy in the room who could stop looking at that fucking <laughs> shit. Uh, and then other girls came from who worked at this Club 40. Do it just became, in between my first and second show, you would have thought I had a lot going on. You right. know? It, it became was, a party. Right. So, it was um, like Joe Cocker was in town ready to blow through all his dough. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm it rolling. It sounds like Sinatra to me. The well, girls yeah. are there. What was that tour Joe Cocker did where he lost all his money? Oh, wow. Mad Dogs and Englishman tour. That's the, my favorite thing. He Isn't toured that and lost his yeah, they, they wrote a book about, like, like, he was at the height of his fame, Joe Cocker, and he put together this crazy traveling <laughs> circus. And, and, then, and, and he came home bankrupt. I mean, That's it was crazy. such a scene, yeah. That's where you go to make your money. Right. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> in, those, in those days, they did it all wrong. Wow. So, anyway, and this, and this other young girl was hanging out. And again, I don't know. She seemed like she was into the whole thing, and I don't know if I had a shot at this girl or not. I'm being presumptuous, but it looked like maybe I had a shot at her. So, 
I was talking to a bunch of different people, and she kept, you know, coming up to me and saying hi. So I didn't know Dan d did this. Like, what? at the end, Dan pulls me aside and goes, come here, I want to talk to you. So we go into the dressing room, and he goes, listen, so I talked to the girl. It's all set. Oh, I go, I go, thank what, God for I go, what did you say to her? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You're Jilly now. You love him. Listen to what Don't you love a guy like listen that? Listen to what he said to her. And, and, and again, Dan, I got to give him stars for this. What'd I would say? never say something so obnoxious. You got to fuck Artie or what, This honey? is what he goes. He goes, he goes listen, honey, come here. He goes, uh, he goes, Artie's very busy right now. <laughs> he goes, he's got a lot of people to talk to. It's, uh, it's a business situation. There's people here in his business life, you know. Uh, I know you want to talk to him, but just for now, just lay back, hang out, have a drink. Everything's going to be fine. Let the, let, he'll do the second show. We'll all hang out. It'll all die down. And then uh, at the end of the night, uh, you stay with me, and I'll just deliver you to Artie's room. Wow. wow. Beautiful. Give me Dan's number. That'd be my new best friend. I said, you said deliver her to my room? I, I said, and she said, okay. And and, uh, and, and I said, what did he say? She, she, she goes, okay. He said, ah. she said, okay. Oh. Boy, she was taken with you. Yeah, so, she wanted you. Uh, I mean, star. who knows? Dan is the only one who was in this conversation. So I said, well, don't. Maybe he's exaggerating. So then I said, look, man, uh, thanks, but, uh, like, don't uh, do not do anything crazy. Like, you know, don't. Yeah, like, you don't need crazy. Don't abduct her. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, no, 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 I, I got I got it on top of it. So at on one, point, of it. one point I wanted to go, Jesus, and the other point I'm going, oh, well, thanks, man. Like, someone has to make that move, I guess. Yeah. So I said to him, I said, the only thing that, not to sound obnoxious, the only thing that would change that is if a better option somehow comes along. Right. You, you know what? You would have been romancing her all night. Thank God right. he took you all that out. You would have talked and talked and talked and yeah. never had the nerve to say, want to come back right. to my room. She was very cool. And, uh, and But wait uh, a second. So what happens? How do you hook here's up? Here's what happens. So... Uh, now about, about, remember I told you when the Ravens played the Giants in the Super Bowl and oh, I was out there in January of 01. It was your guys' first trip to Vegas. I wasn't on the show. Right. Uh -huh. but it was one of your greatest times. I, I stopped at the Mirage to watch the game on my way back to LA to do the Norm show. And I went to the strip club and with me and my buddies and I, I got these two strippers to leave the strip club and come back with me to the, to wow. the hotel for like wow. a week. But, but, uh, I never heard about that. Th this, this was, it wasn't a three. You banged them? Uh, well, uh, the one I did. Right. Okay. So, so now this is a chick. You ever have a chick like that who you banged in your Rolodex where like you jerk off to her? Yeah, yeah, right, right. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's heard about it from me. What happened was now she claims she's not a hooker and I don't think she is an in the sense of like, at the end of the weekend, she goes, "Well, we stayed with you all weekend. We didn't make, and, and I only had sex with the one. The other one was like a friend. It was like a package deal. Uh -huh. and, uh, just give us what we would have made at the strip club for the weekend. <laughs> Good lord! So I thought that sounded fair. You know? <laughs> oh, pay us. For so being at the here. time, it was like thirty five hundred bucks or something for the totem. So I just gave it to him. Uh -huh. and oh, she has. So now this is. Oh, that was the weekend where they were like your girlfriends for the week. Yeah, the this weekend. yeah, well, it, it was like that. Right. It was okay. like that. But so this is like uh, she was. 21 years old. Not a hooker, but can I have 10 grand for the yeah. weekend? Yeah, really. <laughs> so uh, I, she has my cell phone number. I've had the same cell phone number for like 12 years. Okay. So uh, then years later, um, she we're in Vegas. She calls my cell phone. I talk to her. And uh, at the time, I was with Dana. And I said, listen, I, 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 I'm with a, I have a girlfriend who I love. It's, all, it's a done deal. I said, I'm probably getting married. <laughs> oh. And, uh, but she was like really, uh, she's got a kid. And um, Ooh, but 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 I didn't see the kid. She lives. Yours. She lives in another state. <laughs> right. They fly in to go to these strip clubs to uh to to strip for the Super Bowl weekend. So, but I I've always said fuck that girl. Like that's just the one that got away. I'd love to have one more night with that chick. Uh -huh. I, like I've been saying this to myself for years. Right. So in between the first and second show, uh, my cell phone rings and I pick. It's a seven oh two number and it's a um. You know, the Vegas thing, and I pick it up. I go, "Who's this?" And it's this chick. Uh huh. Now, I mean, th and I don't, I don't think I've ever had one of these officially, but I, I, it was a bona fide booty call, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> and that, that doesn't happen to me a lot. And I knew exactly. She started to explain who she was because it's been like. Did you tell her you'd gain weight? <laughs> I think she might know that. She All might right. be following my career a little too closely, but anyway. Okay. Um, I go, please tell me you're in Las Vegas right now. And she goes, yeah, I'm dancing. That she was, you know, she came in and she's dancing at this club. And uh, she goes, you have a late show, right? You're at the Luxor. I said, yeah. I said, I could come over. We were going to go out afterwards. She goes, well, I'm going to be here to like three. Can I just come over by you? Can I just oh, crash? Yes. Can I crash with you tonight? Oh, and I fast was like, food. Delivery. I was like, absolutely. You know, oh, yeah. so. Um, crash with you. Yeah, unbelievable. Now you're like, I thank God I'm in Vegas. Right. This was, I mean, it was one of those right. things where like, please, please don't tell me right now you found God. You're in Utah. And 
Virginia. <laughs> Did you say uh, to her up front, is this time going to cost me again? Well, th there was no discussion of any money. All right. So, uh... Obviously, you had a good time. But I would have paid for it if, if there was. So, um, I told Dan... I started getting greedy. I said to Dan, I said, tell the other chick to see if she wants to come by tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... uh. So we do the second show. Yeah. And uh, we all hang out, do whatever. We went to a bar to get a drink. I, I went up to my room, and I had time to shower. I ordered champagne. All right. Meanwhile, a lot of times these chicks never show up. Right. That's the other thing. Yeah, I mean, issue. why wouldn't you have both chicks there? Well, no. I, I, I don't know. They don't you know, know each other. That I, could go wrong. You know what, Robin? I ain't Tommy Lee. I ain't that good, man. <laughs> right. I'm just not that good. And I'm not going to go for two and lose both. Right. Okay. Know, right. Yeah, you could knock them both out. Right. Yeah, but so. Uh, if you're Tommy Lee, you can go one night if you blow it and not, and not get sex. Right. This you know, guy's the got... next night you'll get sex. Right. So, uh, but she, she uh, sure enough, uh, the I told her I was under a different name. She called the room. And she said, you know, I'm downstairs. At what like time was this? 3.30 in the morning. Oh, you never get any sleep. Go I, ahead. I, don't forget it. I, yeah. I planned on not getting any sleep. So she, uh, she shows up from stripping. She still had her stripper, like, outfit on. How'd she look? She started giving me. She look, uh, look, again, Dan has met her. I think she's 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 like 5'2", five, 5'3", five, but she's, she's got a, such a smoking body. Mm. She's got fake tits. But um, I think she's hot as hell, man. I mean, she looked fine to me. Look, See, I thought this story her. was going to uh, the chick that Dan gave Set the rap up to. For you. Well, it, but that well. chick was again was very nice. But man, did she get extra fucked up too? She was like, she was sort of stumbling by the end, and I don't know what was going on. She was in a pro like this other chick. Uh, so she uh, she shows up and she she starts giving me a lap dance in the room and right I'm, away. Yeah, lap that, dance. Whoa. Uh, did you even talk a little bit? Did, you know what? I, she I think she realized I didn't really want to waste any time. Right. Where was the music? Where's it coming from? She had music? From his lap. Well, we, yeah, we had, uh, you know, there's this radios in the room. Yeah. And uh, we put, I put What are you wearing? Like I, a big robe? I picture like Jackie Gleason. It's like Dangerfield. No pants. Yeah, yeah. You know? I had time Come to shower. Come on in. I had time to shower, and I, I put on, like, you know, sweatpants and a shirt. I didn't put a tux on for this broad. Right. And uh, that I, was. Because you look great in your sweatpants. I'm, sp <laughs> I'm glad you went with that look. What was I going to do? I mean, you know, I, 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 I couldn't get, you know. A moo I couldn't get hot. Shirts are particularly nice on him now. Go ahead. So, uh. Uh, so I, I, we fucking, we, we right at bang it. to like fucking six in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Motherfucker. Just like right, big, big Vegas bed rolling around, like, you know, just like. Rubbers? So and oh, God, rubbers. Wait rubbers, a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lap, damn. Did you that. get the rubbers? Huh? Did you get the rubbers? Or did I, she brought, have I brought rubbers. I see. Nice. Now she what lap kind of rubbers danced do you, bring? you. What kind of rubbers? I don't. You see, I'm not like you. Rubbers with me. I just hate that I, I'm forced to. Uh... If you wore a good rubber, I'm telling you, this one I got is unbelievable. Yeah, the new one you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I got to yeah. tell you. I, gotta tell you. I just get the that. regular Trojans with the, the, you know, extra lube rib or whatever the fuck. Sure, it is. when you haven't gotten laid in a while, yeah, nothing's anything. Gonna I hate. I despise rubbers, man. I could not be the more antithesis of you, but right. I, I just like this time. Look, man, I ain't not wearing a rubber. Right. Yeah, I just want to know how they got from the lap dance to the bed. How did that go? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't a smooth. So did you get undressed? It wasn't like watching Artie. Earl Monroe do Earl Monroe do Earl the Pearl move. Artie, did you get undressed in front of her? Yeah. So yeah. were you self conscious because you'd gained so much weight? You know what? Uh, the, the lighting was right. I said, fuck it. I don't who care. Cares? I really, Howard finally said, fuck it. Yeah, you know what? If she doesn't like it, yeah. who cares? I mean, she called me. Right. <laughs> did she say, Artie, boy, you've gotten. She mentioned it the next day. She did oh, what, what she did said. She say? Maybe <laughs> nothing. She was like, she was like, you really should take care of yourself. Uh, <laughs> she's already becoming like a girlfriend. I know, Jesus. And I don't know. She again. Now she, her kid. When I met her, her kid was one. And, kid's fourteen uh, now. The kid's like eight an hour or something. And oh, you're a, kidding. And she she starts to give me that shit like you would love him. I'm like, really? I would. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Uh, she sees you as a soft touch. Could you imagine an eight year old kid coming into my life right now? <laughs> he, he, would, he would not have a shot. Did you give her a little cash as a present? No. So here's what happened. So um, it was just a, you know then we fall asleep about six a.m. Right. And uh, we sleep till two in the afternoon. Nice. And uh, get up, get a little blowjob in the morning. Ooh, nice. I, mean, my, I mean, it was like fucking. You're blown awake. Because <laughs> like, the first time, like, remember that that chick that I, I was with at the Borgata I yeah. told you about? That was still, I still had so much emotions in my head about that. It felt like Dana was in the room when I was doing <laughs> that. Right, right. This was the first time where I sort of, in my head, guilt free, just. Just let it loose. Uh -huh. You knew your relationship was really over, so. I mean, what the fuck? Right. You, know? you let go. It was like. Blow job okay. when you woke up? Yeah. After all that sex? Yes. And did you come? Yes. She was Are you at sure it. you don't want to have an eight year old? Uh, yeah, maybe that eight year old's not sounding so bad. <laughs> yeah, Dan. Is that Dan? Are you Dan the Song Parody Man? Hello? No, no, no. This is oh. Dan from Vegas. How oh. you doing? Okay, hey. Hey, great. Listen, Artie, I was there. Uh, I was there. 
the uh, Pharrell, the Laura tab? The what? And, uh, huh? What'd the you Laura say? Tab. Remember the blue oh, Laura tab? Was, <laughs> at Pharrell show at the sports book, a guy was throwing basically Vicodins at me and right, Pharrell. Right. They, were, they were Laura tabs. Hey, but I want to know, remember that, that little, little skanky girl from uh, Pennsylvania that was standing in front of me you were checking out called her hooker? Yeah. So, so did you, you fuck her too? That was the, that's the girl I, have you been listening to this rap? Yeah, that's yeah, the girl yeah, yeah. that Dan said, I'll deliver you to oh. Artie's room. <laughs> that's the girl. Was she hot? No. So you probably well, made the right move. Right. She, I mean, but she Dude, I lo- okay, she wasn't fucking Heather Locklear. Wait, what do you say? She was. I thought she was. I thought she was hot. Actually, you didn't think she, she was hot? She looked like she had a little heroin body, and she was all tweaked out. Huh? I like I that. Mean, she, she was. A, she was. And the bitch, you know, she had little crust stains underneath her panties and all uh, that. And uh, what is this guy talking about? He's like ruining he the illusion. Know. God, is he ruining my butt? Really? Well, that wasn't the girl I was with, but I'll defend that chick. I think she was she hot. She probably was. This guy's just being an idiot. Yeah, he's um, being a dick. Go ahead. Uh, but again, other, I got, other people could uh, met the girl. Uh, Who's other people? Anybody around here? Uh, Dan and um, anybody was backstage. Shit. Well, yeah, uh, I just figured maybe somebody but, uh, could verify. Uh, hey, look, and that was also the first chick that we, we ran into. We were like, she's like, can I come to the show? We were like, you just So come. after you after the chick blew you, did she split? So then we uh, then we uh, ordered a little something. I let her order. Where did the... she blow you? In the bed just laying there on your back? Yeah. Nice. And then I let her order the breakfast, which was a mistake because uh, it was just coffee, juice, and, like, fruit plates. Who eats that? Uh, she's really trying to take care of yeah. You should have been like, honey, I'm going to take my morning shit. I can't oh, eat this. I said, uh, I said to her, as a matter of fact, I got I to go eat now. <laughs> now you know why she's thin. Um, absolutely. She said, so uh, she said uh, she had to leave at, like, 3. She stays in some condo with these other girls. And right. I said, they well, probably all rent a place. I said, come to the show tonight with your friends. And she's like, she gave me a look, and I realized, of course, this is, like, their huge money night. Right. Th- 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 she says, I'm going to be working till 7 a.m. at the club because, mm. I mean, the night before the Super Bowl, God, what they must make. And uh, she says, was Do you really... think she's giving dudes hand jobs and shit all night? I don't know. Ooh. Who knows? Uh, Who wants I mean, that? I would say the club. her when she just got into town. I would say the club where I met her, or what... <laughs> the club I met her at is different from where she was dancing when she called me. Uh huh. But, um,. The where I met her, the place was kind of liberal, <laughs> you know, uh, with with a uh, contact. You don't get scared when those chicks blow you. I mean, they can give you the herps or something. Mm-hmm. Look, man, I guess anything's possible. But, yeah. I could also get hit by a fucking truck. I don't know. Uh, and the truck ain't gonna. What if you don't get hit? The truck ain't gonna feel as good <laughs> as the blowjob. And she, she, a, she, did she have a great body. Like, was she totally nude when she was blowing you? Like, a- ass Dan. I, was her ass up in the air? Like, yes, yes. Oh, man. Like she's totally uninhibited, right? Very T- very tight, like uh, yeah. abs. Yeah, yeah, you got a labs going on there. Fuck. And I said, she I rub always, under your balls. I always say, I wish Completely I had. Completely shaved, a- everything's did she, did, bare. Did she rub under the balls? Did uh, she play with the balls? Yeah, she. What? She, she, she did that stuff. Yeah. Did you talk louder? <laughs> she lick your balls? No, there was no. Any tongue in your ass? No. No way. No, no one's no, going there. She, 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 she touched Ooh. my balls, but she wasn't licking anything. She, she cradled the balls and blew you. There was cradling. Oh, cradle. <laughs> Any taint teasing with the finger? <laughs> the finger didn't enter any areas it shouldn't. But uh, I, like, she was very look. She's very good at what she does. But honey, what she let me smell your finger. I no make sure. teeth. No teeth in that blowjob, right? But no. <laughs> it was so, like, hey, Dan, like getting blown by Gary Zorita. <laughs> Dan, you saw, no, that's nice. <laughs> hey Dan, uh, d- did you see the chick? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She was hot, huh? Oh, smoking hot, smoking hot, incredible. I mean, uh, I wish I could have been Ari that night. The, ah. the, well, the, what? Like, tell Howard about her. But she's. I'm trying to figure out. She's short. She's like five two, but she's got like a. Dan, did you <laughs> fuck the other one that Artie turned down? No, no, absolutely not. I was trying to be a good guy, you know, because I got a girlfriend and all my poon hounding days seem to be over. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Dan, I tell you what, I, I, I would Dan, say this girl's body is like. This girl's body's like. Miss Howard Stearns, but a lot tighter without as big uh, as big uh, fake titties. You said you weren't going to Vegas. What happened? You know, at the last minute, I got talked into it, and you know, who am I to refuse? Mm-hmm. Thank God he came. Uh, uh, Dan's, Dan's my hero for the weekend. How Dan. did you afford to fly to Vegas or someone flew you out there? Yeah, actually, uh, Jeff Beecher flew me out there because we had some other business that he wanted to discuss. He just assumed that I was going to be here. Then when I told him that I wasn't going, he was like, dude, you got to come, man. I'll just have a ticket for you. So wow, like, yeah, nice. All right, I'm here. The guy at the Hard Rock. The, um... You're right. Thank yeah, God. Beecher's whatever. Because you were busy lining up the chicks for Artie with a re- very direct uh, kind of conversation. Well, Dan was a very good friend this weekend. Right? Now, what <laughs> did the awesome. chick look like that, that you were lining up? Oh, wait, Dan, see, a guy just called in. You know the chick, the little chick who you said I could deliver you to Artie's room? <laughs> that yeah. girl? What, what do you think of her? Was she hot or, or not hot? 
I thought she was hot, but she was definitely not as hot as the other one. No, right, but I'm, I don't know. I, I think almost the same kind of thing, almost the same type of physical type, except her titties are probably smaller than the one that you did end up with. She, her problem was she was a little messed up, so maybe guys... She was a little messed up. I was babysitting her just so I could deliver her to you. She <laughs> still fucking drinks on me. She needed babysitting. Yeah. She was one of those girls. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, it sounds like... Uh, a little sloppy. I might have wanted the sloppy one only because she wasn't a pro, but maybe she is. Who knows? Well, here's the thing. I, I, she, this, I, she didn't charge me any money, this girl. Well, she didn't? She, That's well, good. Her justification was last time, she goes, look, I just you pulled me away from work. Right. And I think she was waiting for me to make the move where, like, if you just give me... Me what I would make tonight, I'll, I'll hang. be here tomorrow. And did you did you have an awkward moment like when she was leaving? Like were you like, gee, maybe I should throw her some money? I never brought it up, and she never brought right, it up. Right, that's good. And, What'd you uh, do to say goodbye? You kiss goodbye and yeah. throw out the door? Yeah, she said, "Listen, it was great to see." You. And um, she, she swallow your cum? Uh, not 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 totally. No. All right, all right, not that's totally. Safe. First date, you know. <laughs> God, Look, could you imagine not... what videotape of that must look like? Did I mean, you... laying on a bed. Or did what? you smack that ass? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, lo I love doing that. You do. You got it from behind and was smacking the ass. I love. Uh, I love spanking the chick. A little hair pulling. Yeah. Well, she probably needed a good spanking. She's bad. A little hair pulling. <laughs> uh, and.